This here is a Dell Optiplex pre-built and I bought it on eBay for about $99 or so. I'll just say a hundred bucks. And it is, um, it's quite old. I think it's running fourth gen Intel Core i5. It does come with Windows 10 preloaded on a 240 gig SSD. It comes with 16 gigs of RAM, I believe. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Nothing else really going on here. And that's one of the underlying beauties, I think, of Optiplex gaming PCs is the fact that you can buy a shell like this that has everything you need except for a discrete card, and then all you have to do is insert that card, whatever it might be. We've got a pretty decent one. I think it fits the components nicely in here that we're going to throw into it. I'll talk about it in a second. But um, yeah, I just I want to unbox this first and just kind of see what we're dealing with. It's been a while since I've put together an Optiplex gaming PC. And um, at least on the surface, this seemed like a pretty decent deal for around 100 bucks. I don't know. I might have overpaid. I'm sure there's some really like like budget hawks out there who are going to look at this and say, wow, that was an awful deal. What are you thinking? But uh, this is getting my feet wet again. And uh, I want you guys to come along for the ride. Are you ready? Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. So let's dive in, shall we? I'm gonna go ahead and give you a POV here of the unboxing. It's, yeah, nothing super Super duper fancy here again, old Optiflex. What I did think was pretty cool though, the fact that you got a, a keyboard included, although you probably don't want to game with this. It, it is something. If you're on a very, very tight budget, this might be all you have. So I think it's cool that it comes with it, especially for a hundred bucks. You also get a mouse in here somewhere. Yeah, this thing right here reminds me of the good old days, middle school, am I right? Oh yeah, and I uh, gotta love it when it says includes display cable and it comes with this old thing. Woo -wee. Now let's see what's on the inside. I don't expect it to be spotless in here. Again, it's a very old pre-built. If I can get it off, there we go. Um, actually pretty clean. So whoever I uh, bought this from, they, I mean, either this wasn't used at all and it was like in a very controlled environment or someone at least tried to clean it up. I think they did because they put this SSD in here up front. It's a little Samsung 240 gig. And uh, so, so that's nice. It, it could definitely be a lot worse. I really have no complaints. The memory in here is from Micron, eight gig DIMMs a piece. This is DDR3, remember it's an older platform, but 16 gigs in total is not bad for a gaming PC that's um, yeah this old and this cheap. The power supply was my one major concern here. I just don't want it to be a fire starter. These Dell OEM units usually aren't built to uh, the greatest standards. This isn't 80 plus certified or anything like that from what I can tell. And it is only a 240 watt unit. So that's gonna limit us in terms of what card, uh, discrete graphics card, I should say, will be supported by this platform. Now that discrete card will go here in this uppermost blue PCIe slot. We've even got some older slots. Yeah, this is a dated platform. Uh, space front to back for the card is not all that plentiful because we've got this hard drive cage here, which it looks like is, yeah, it's riveted to the frame. So that's not gonna be fun to remove. Uh, you do have optical drive, support up top, five and a quarter inch. We actually do get an optical drive included, so there's that. Um, the cooling is not the best. We get one tiny exhaust fan. It is what it is. Look, this is one big compromise, folks. No one's saying that this is the end-all be-all best gaming PC you can build. Of course it isn't. This thing cost $100, okay? And uh, the graphics card we're gonna put in here is also fairly cheap. Let me show you what I mean. So this here, is a graphics card that I spent about $50 on. I wanted this to be a $150 rig, and in order to do that, I had to make, well, I had to make a, a few compromises. First off, the power supply is gonna be, like I said, one limiting factor, and it's gonna pretty much force us to use a card that doesn't require supplemental PCIe out. There are only a few decent entry-level cheap cards I would recommend at this point in 2022. There's so many cards you can get for around 100 bucks, $200 that are really good, but they all require supplemental power. This card does not. This thing is like packaged and wrapped with so many layers of tape here. Aha, here we are. And I just have to confirm <laughs> that this doesn't require supplemental power. Don't believe that it does. Nope, it doesn't, awesome. So, meet a GTX 1050. It's a two gig card. 
And uh, well, it's nice and small, so we know it's gonna fit. It doesn't require, again, PCI supplemental power. And it's, it's just a tried and true card. It's nothing that's gonna, you know, it's not gonna give you insane frame rates, okay? Let's just be honest. But it is a solid 720p and 1080p contender. You can play games with this, and you can even play some modern games with some pretty, you know, serious in-game compromises, at least from a graphic standpoint. But it's, you know, it's conservative on power. It doesn't run super loud. And for an Optiplex build, I think that this fits right in. 50 bucks, it's not bad. You might even be able to find these even cheaper now. When I bought this in mid-August, these were going for anywhere between 50 and $80. Didn't make sense to spend 80 because we've got GTX 1070s now that you can buy for like 120, 130, and then 1060s are 80 to $100. So those cards are a lot better than this one. Of course, this being the 50 series model, it's uh, gonna be more entry level, but it'll, it'll do, you know? It, it'll it'll do for our little Optiplex rig. Let's just hope it works, because it, it's used, so. Installation here is pretty straightforward. Just need to pull, uh, I say that, I gotta remember how to do this, there we go. So we're gonna pull back there. It's gonna be these top two slots, uh, slot covers we'll remove. And then the card just slides in. Again, no supplemental PCI power to worry about. It'll draw all of its power through the 16 lane slot and then we just close this back. There we go. It's literally that simple. Uh, even folks who aren't very familiar with PCs, they could figure this out in a few seconds. <laughs> you know, I was moving stuff around just now trying to get my, uh, my Steam library connected so we can run some tests, some benchmarks. And I noticed that this was only secured by one screw, which is totally fine because there's no moving parts in an SSD. It's just kind of, yeah, you can tell it was just kind of thrown in there sloppily. Oh, okay, uh, setting the camera up and the PC turned on by itself after connecting power. It is what it is, but look at that. We've got a post, so that's a good sign. Now I don't have an operating system loaded on the hard disk drive, but apparently the seller loaded one on the SSD. So that's what we're gonna double check here. Uh, just wanna make sure that it boots into Windows. Surprisingly quiet. So yeah, Windows 10 is on there. And so far it looks like the graphics card's working as well because we're getting picture through that. We'll know for sure once we run our benchmarks. What is this? Why did my PC restart? There's a problem that keeps us from getting your PC ready to use, but we think an update will get things working again. Okay, maybe Windows isn't properly loaded on there. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Just had to run through an extra prompt or two. And uh, once we get this set up, We'll start running those benchmarks. I'm gonna start with 3D Mark, Fire Strike, and then we'll move on to a few games. Kicking things off with Fire Strike, then you'll see uh, that it doesn't look all that smooth. This is pretty standard for lower end systems in a benchmark like this. This is a synthetic load, so it's, it's gonna be pretty heavy on both the 1050 and our Core i5, which is actually a third gen Core i5, a 3470, uh, not a fourth gen like I initially thought. That's not too big a deal, but still worth noting. Uh, in this Optiplex, it was only around $100. Our score of 5344 puts us better than 22% of all submitted results. It sounds pretty awful um, and it is a very low score compared to what you would expect from a modern uh, gaming rig in around a thousand dollar price range. But remember this is literally like a, an eighth or a tenth of that cost and I think scoring better than 22% of submitted results uh, and seeing that we're right in the middle of that uh, first big bell curve there on the chart I'm actually okay with this. It's it's kind of impressive, really, for what we spent. I forgot to mention this one, but I wanted to run Cinebench just to show you what this CPU is capable of. Again, being a third gen Core i5, what, we're on 12th, almost 13th gen Intel by this point, so, uh, yeah, this is a decade or more than a decade old. It's definitely showing its age. This is scoring below even the most basic, primitive, modern laptop-grade processors, according to Cinebench's own little, uh, little reservoir of data here. The 2416 is, yeah, it's at the bottom of the barrel, but, but at least you get four cores, and I'd say for a hundred dollar gaming PC, if you want to call it, I mean, it's a gaming PC, but yeah, it's a very cheap one. I don't think this score is all that bad. Again, we're working with a very, very tight budget here. Now, moving on to Grand Theft Auto V, our first game in this list of benchmarks. You can see that uh, in 1080p, 
with medium, or in this case, it would be normal settings. So I guess you could call that a low if you wanted, but there's only really normal, high, and then very high uh, presets for a lot of the in-game graphics here. This game was running at over 100 FPS fairly consistently, and I was pretty surprised by that. Uh, you could definitely bump some in-game settings, get rid of some of the jaggies here because we have anti-aliasing completely disabled. Uh, that would smooth things out a bit, make things look a bit more realistic at the expense, of course, of the frame rate. But I think that over 100 FPS, I mean, even on the ground behind the Hummer, we're getting around 80, 90 FPS. That's a really good score. Next up was Ashes of the Singularity, or you could call this benchmark of the Singularity, because I don't know a single person who actually plays this game. But uh, it's a very heavy game to run, even in 1080p. It stresses the heck out of our components. Average frame rates all under 30 FPS means you're gonna have to make some serious compromises to get something like this to work because there are so many moving parts in this game, so many individual little pieces uh, and just explosions and things happening simultaneously. It puts a heavy stress on both the CPU and the GPU. Uh, so be very careful with games like this. I would say uh, games like maybe Total War Warhammer uh, and the like will also struggle just a bit because of the old CPU architecture especially. Now obviously all that said, there are games like CSGO and Dota 2, League of Legends. These are all going to run well over 100 FPS. You could even be pretty liberal with some of your in-game settings and achieve that 120 FPS mark if that's what you're aiming for. Uh, you could get over 200 FPS in certain situations. So uh, just bear in mind, you know, if we can get over 100 FPS in GTA 5, we could certainly get over that uh, in some of the less graphically demanding games, let's say. Uh, CSGO tends to be a very popular one. My wife, you know, she's played that pretty much her whole life. And I'm happy to say that even a $150 potato PC can handle CSGO without issue. Just ignore how bad I am at this. This is, this is literally like awful gameplay. And lastly, a racing game to round things out. F1 2020, yes, a slightly older F1 title, uh, but this is the one I had preloaded on the hard disk drive that we hooked up. And running in low settings in 1080p, we achieved over 60 FPS, actually around 80 on average, which I think is pretty darn good. Uh, the minimum FPS was only about 70. I know that's not 1% lows, which is a more accurate interpretation of the frame stuttering, uh, but still, I mean, if your minimum frame rate is only 10 FPS lower than your average, you don't have much stuttering at all going on. So a very smooth playback again, despite being limited by the age of the platform, I'd say this is a job well done for, um, yeah, for an old Dell Optiplex. Well, are you impressed? I mean, look, I, yes, it's it's a freaking potato, okay? It is as bare bones as you could probably ever get when it comes to a gaming PC without making some really drastic compromises. Not that we already are making compromises. Of course, the platform being very old, yes, this is a dead end. It's not upgradable, blah, 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 blah. No one cares. In a $150 budget, nobody cares if it's upgradable. You do this when you're in dire straits and you just need something now on a very strict budget. That is it. No one cares about trying to future-proof a $150 gaming PC. So that's not even in the cards, and that's okay. Again, you have to manage your expectations here. For $150, you are getting a lot of, of I think, potential for some of the, I mean, look at the games that we played, right? GTA 5, F1 2020, racing games, simulation games. You can play a lot with this. And it's mostly thanks to the GTX 1050, but the fact that we could buy a $100 essentially computer outright, yes, it's an older platform, uh, and then just shove a GTX 1050 in here, not worry about power delivery at all, really not worry about temperatures at all or anything like that. It's already got an SSD in here with Windows 10 preloaded. Yes, the owner of the system didn't activate Windows. That That's annoying. But other than that, everything was pretty much plug and play. And that's the joy of Optiplex builds. You just, you buy a system that's already built and you just throw a discrete card in here. It literally took 15 seconds to do. And at that point, you hop into Windows, install your graphics drivers, and you can get straight into gaming. For $150, that is a heck of a bargain. And for the longest time, it seems it's been impossible. The last two years, you couldn't find a GTX 1050 for $50. You couldn't find an RX 570 for 50, 60, $70. It just, it wasn't a thing. Um, I would say, honestly, a better card than this, if you can find one, especially now, because this video is gonna go up several weeks after we film it, and several, several weeks more, than when I bought this card. So prices continue to fall. When I bought this 1050, it was around, what, 60 bucks or so. Uh, you can find RX 570 four gigs for like $60 now. Yes, they've probably been mined with, and that's just, I mean, again, it's one of the trade-offs of opting for a very dirt cheap entry level gaming rig. I mean, you, you have really no choice here but to buy used if you want real value. Buying new, you're, I mean, at a $50 price tag, you're looking at GT710 territory, brand new. 
That's awful. That's an awful choice for gaming. I'd much rather take my chances on a used card that games a lot better on a tight budget than a brand new card that can't even game to begin with. I mean, at least you have a chance to game for a reasonable amount of time with a used 1050 or RX 570 or what have you. So I would strongly consider this or something like this if you are just, yeah, in dire straits, you need something and you're on a very, very slim budget. Look, I've been there in college and I, I was the typical broke college student until YouTube started taking off kind of midway through my, so it was like sophomore to junior year. Um, and I was making decent, a few hundred dollars every month on YouTube. That was great for a college student. I mean, I wasn't really, I, I didn't really have a job during school. I had a, a summer job but uh, I didn't really need to, to work during school because I had YouTube. And so eventually I was making enough money to do that. I didn't have to you know, resort to something this cheap, but I, I was in this position at one point and this was something I considered. My dad had an old uh, compact PC that uh, I kind of rigged up as my own. I bought a graphics card from Best Buy at the time, which in hindsight I should have bought used, um, but this was several, several years ago. So now I'm much more familiar with the market and this is exactly how I would do it nine times out of 10 on a $150, $200 budget. Buy yourself a decent OEM pre-built, something from Dell, HP maybe with like a fourth gen and a third gen's cutting it pretty, that's cutting it pretty close. So fourth gen I think is a sweet spot. You'll probably end up paying closer to $200 for sixth gen and up Intel stuff. It is what it is, especially if you're creeping into i7 territory, just the i7 resale value is, is still there with the OEMs. Uh, but you know, this being third gen, again, came with the SSD, came with the power supply that was good enough at least so far to run the games we ran uh, with the 1050 being powered exclusively through the PCIe slot. It works, it works and for 150 bucks, again, I would do it again, I would. <laughs> and this is what I would recommend you do if you're on that tight budget. With all that said, let me know what you think about, um, yeah, this setup here, how did I do? I'm, I'm curious what you guys think about it. Again, times are changing very quickly. I know you can get a better card than this now, but at the time a 1050 made sense. So look at these, maybe look at uh, RX 570s and the like, and kind of kind of play it by ear from there. Uh, but I am curious to know what you think about this setup and the price I paid for it. Again, about hundred and it was about 150 to 160 dollars. I have to go back and look again. I don't remember the price. I think I think I paid 60 or 70 dollars for this 1050 at the time. But you can find these for 50 bucks all day now. So, um, so that's nice. Uh, if you enjoyed watching the video by clicking the like button, that would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next one. I'm so proud of this little optoplex trick, I really am. Thanks so much for watching, my name is Greg, and thanks for learning with me.